So uh, the main uh, proposition that I want to give today as the first negative, negative um, is that uh, the U.S. does not need to provide more aid than it currently does. So the first point made by the affirmative is that Syria needs the U.S. and um, basically providing more uh, ground troops into Syria would not necessarily automatically benefit um, Syria because just because you're providing more troops it doesn't necessarily mean that there will be less deaths from civilians and the rebel army. So in an article written in the Slate magazine by Matthew Yeglesias <coughs> is that um, by the same token uh, proponents of helping by killing are generally very eager to assert that killing bad guys and their subordinates will set valuable precedents for the future and tend to discount the risk that interventions create perverse incentives for rebel groups. So basically, <coughs> if we're sending in uh, more <coughs> of our soldiers, then we're creating conflict with the rebel soldiers and more of the, um, the Assad, therefore leading to more deaths, including our own soldiers. And to address the problem with uh, the lost generation, or which is basically what uh, we call the students and the kids between the ages seven to 18 who aren't in education right now. So necessarily uh, bringing more uh, military would not benefit any of the education. Instead, it would be using more money spent into the military when we could have spent more money into putting it in, into education. So um, coming from an economic standpoint, an article by Zero Hedge written by their uh, writers, um, the quote says that in fact most ec economic models show that military spending diverts resources from productive uses. Such as consumption and investment it ultimately shows economic growth and reduced employment. So a lot of the tax money would be going to the military and therefore we would have to lay off even teachers or instructors and then therefore students who do, uh, refugees who do, who are in the U.S. wouldn't get adequate education. And um, the, um, addressing the next affirmative uh, proposition that Syria, Syria's, uh, as a country is in danger, such as their economy, um, as he already stated that um, no matter what, you can't avoid the economic the economic um, downfall of the country. Ever since the Civil War started, no matter when we in intervene, the economy is already in shambles. So um, uh, post-wars in the past have shown that uh, rebuilding a country isn't easy. So if we were to intervene and stop the Assad, we would have to rebuild the government. And uh, just like in the past, in the Afghan government, an article um, by the New York Times by their board, um, we built the Afghan government after taking down the uh, the jihad group that was in there, and the casualty rate for Afghan troops were it was uh, unsustainable, and the economy was in shambles. The war in Afghanistan has cost American taxpayers uh, in excess of eight hundred dollar eight hundred billion dollars, including one hundred fifteen billion dollars for a reconstruction effort. More than the inflation uh, adjustment amount the U.S. spent on the Marshall Plan. And just because we took down that group, it doesn't necessarily mean that all terrorists are gone. After we uh, pull all of our troops out of uh, the Middle East, or Syria in this case, then other um, terrorist, groups, terrorist groups come to rise, such as in the past when we killed Osama bin Laden and a lot of other strong uh, ISIS leaders, terrorist leaders. Other people will always come in and uh, follow their legacy. And to uh, address the next approach of that, uh, the refugee problem in Syria, um, we are doing our best and we are actually the number one uh, provider in the nations in one, uh, one trillion dollars in medical and disability payments. And um, actually there are other countries that aren't providing their share such as the Gulf states, who have barely provided any um, help for the Syrian country. And also uh, the financial problem. Um, 
the U.S. has shown that uh, they they aren't spending too much on the financial uh, on the international uh, aid. But uh, inter um, the latter expense is significant. In the report that Crawford uh, wrote in the cost of the war, U.S. military spending on Middle East wars, he states that the interest costs for overseas contingency operation spending alone are projected to add more than $1 trillion to the national debt by 2023. By 2053, interest costs will be at least $7.9 trillion unless the U.S. changes the way it pays for the wars. And um, also, the U.S. has been providing humanitarian aid, unlike what the firm news says. They've been sending in um, specifically boxes that aren't tagged by U.S., so they aren't taken down by the Assad government when they reach the borders of Syria. And because they do that is because they are in conflict with the other uh, countries that are supporting both sides of the rebels, such as Turkey, who um, aren't a fan of uh, America's usage of the Kurdish troops who have been in conflict with Turkey, and also Russia, who's on the opposite side, who has, um, who's a, a powerhouse country, basically. And uh, so, finally, I believe that U.S. has been providing uh, enough share, and there are other countries that need to step up their game, and we have done a lot, but some problems can't be fixed, such as their economic problem that has already um, been foreseen when the Civil War started. Thank you.